she's considered it being on a pivot. Uh, since it's going around the earth. And what it is, it's the, it's the Big Dipper in its four phases. It's how we're going to get through these, this year. How we're going to get through it. And I gave you all a copy of it. There it is, Big Dipper. You can get it from any number of sources. I've got it in a book up here, right here. What I did, I took it out of this book and blew it up. It's about the stars, but they didn't say anything about it being the swastika. I don't know how in the world anybody can open that up and not see the swastika, do you? They didn't say anything about it being the swastika, but that's what it is. And among the pagans, that's what they said it was. It was the swastika located with the north star, and the north star is directly above the earth, north of the earth. And being north of the earth, it actually is like the pagans didn't know that the earth was hanging on nothing. That's, they didn't know that. They thought the earth was being held up by a turtle or by Atlas or somebody. So, so you had you had above the earth uh, you had the Big Dipper in its four phases and what they had to do here is autumn to winter to, to, sp uh, to spring to summer. She called it a zigzag. Uh, I, I put it up there wrong before I wasn't looking at it close. I'm trying to take my time here. Autumn to winter, winter to spring, and it's because you, if you're looking at it from where God is seeing it, and it's going round. <coughs> and they said a queen, a queen goddess had to be turning that, and they called her queen of heaven. And, and Milita was called Queen of Heaven, and that's who we, Israel was worshiping, the Queen of Heaven, <coughs> in the 44th chapter of Jeremiah, and the 7th chapter of Jeremiah. Is it 7 or 14? All right, it's one of the two. Look at both of them. Read them. That's funny, Jim, because down in Tullahoma, they're teaching us about different games and stuff. They use the swastika yeah. as a symbol, and they also use lightning bolts. Oh, yeah. Well, the lightning bolt, that's probably why they're zigzag. That's called the Sigrun. When Hitler brought the Sigrun in, and that's why they Sigrun, that's the Sigrun, and they, and that was the SS or the or Hitler's hitman, his mafia hitman that went out killing everybody that got in the way. A lieutenant could over, come out, uh, could overthrow a general in the among the Nazis. If you were a Nazi, you were everybody wasn't a Nazi, just the people that were the Sigruns and the. Everybody in the German army. I thought when I was a kid, we was going to have to grow up and fight the Germans, and I thought they were all Nazis. <laughs> and the worst thing we could call each other uh, was a was a Nazi or a yellow a yellow jab. That's what we called each other. Mama quite called me a Nazi. <laughs> of course, Hitler was on the front page of everything back then. He was fool, and we all scared of the Japanese. And we were scared of Hitler, and thought they was going to come get us. So if we called each other a name, that's what we called each other at six and seven years old. Remember that, Gerald? Huh? Yeah. Did y'all do that? Huh? We did that. We did that too. You don't know how. You don't know how close the world was to being dominated. America was terrified of that man. They put him in movies, cartoons, everything, and he was a fire worshiper. He believed he was invincible because he was a fire worshiper, not because he was Adolf Hitler. Now, that's what it is. That's what it is. When you draw the points, and that's what it is, like I said, it's a, there's the North Star. You draw a line to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You got to... You do, and what they're doing is trying to get through. They're trying to get through the winter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're trying to get through the winter. And that's the swastika. It's the wheel of the year. It's the wreath. And I got so much to read on this, and I'm running out of time. This is kind of a review of some things, but I've kind of slowed down. I hope you'll learn some things different. Her first chapter is Samhain. That's her first chapter. She's got eight chapters, and a chapter on each one of these sun festivals. And that's what Israel was involved. It's the same thing as Christmas. It's the same thing. It's the same thing as 
as uh, Mardi Gras, it's the same thing as Easter. You think Jesus wants his name on it? No. Not at all. Not at all. I believe that Jesus is God in the flesh and he died to save his predestinated elect family. And that we've been predestined to conform to the image, which is the word icon, means likeness of Christ. Do I believe it's like Jesus to change all the names of these things and make it Christian? Who can bring a clean thing out of unclean, not one? You can't take a pig and clean it up and turn it into a little sheep or a dog. You can change the name all you want. It's still an old pagan drunken festival and the world will show you that every year. And we spend more money. We spent $9 billion dollars on Christmas trees and kept them in our dens for a very short period of time from, night, from 1992 to 2001 and we took these nine billion dollars kept them in our den for just a short time at two or three weeks and threw them away out there by the mailbox these dead gods out there so the, so the garbage men can carry away nine billion dollars and put it in the garbage dump and America's starving to death you think God wants that? It's stupid. People are fighting, more drinking at this time of the year, more suicides at this time of the year. It's still the old ancient drunken festival. And when you get into, when we get into, and I'm going to come back to this, we'll be into Halloween. It's pagan, no matter whether people like it or not. It sounds like science fiction. It sounds like science fiction. They'd make good science fiction writers, wouldn't they? It's insane. You people are just like Joseph Smith. You're out of your minds. Joseph Smith any more crazy than a bunch of Baptists to do Christmas and Easter and accept Christ and pray the sinner's prayer. What do you think? What do you think Jehovah's Witnesses are worse than you? Pentecostals? You got everybody healing everybody and everybody speaking and jabbering jibber jabber that don't make any sense. That's not any crazy than what you're doing and you won't believe and listen to the facts. I can paint the facts all day long on a board nine miles long and they won't pay any attention. Will they? I just send witness to Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons I had to a Baptist and a Pentecostal and a Church of Christ. What's the difference? Nobody knows any facts. Nobody knows any definitions. They don't care. And they've changed everything. Like I've said, they start to foreclose on your house, go up to the corner of the street, change the word Maple Street into First Street. And when they come to foreclose on your house, say, you can't foreclose. I don't live on Maple Street anymore. Just change the name and they won't come and take your house, right? <laughs> yeah. You think God is pleased with all this filth that we adopted in the church? And stuck his name on it? No siree. He don't like it at all. It was against the law to celebrate Christmas 300 years ago in America. The Puritans, they killed 60 million Christians and Jews, the Catholics did during the Spanish Inquisition, 60 million. The Puritans said, we're going to go purify. That's where they got their name. We're going to purify this new land of all Roman Catholic papal influences. Where they outlawed it. Got repealed by the Universalists and Unitarians, a bunch of silly deists. And none of the Protestants have anything to do with it till the end of the 1800s. And then they started beginning to fall away from truth. That's when the Southern Baptists started falling away and quit preaching predestination. That's when the Independent Baptists pulled away from them. Then they kept preaching predestination and they quit in the mid-50s and split and whatever direction. Now nobody's telling much truth anywhere. You just wait. God's going to show who he is before this is over. I mean, I can't believe it. Like I said, you, you can't change the name of something and make it something different. I've said it before. You, you can't go rob a bank. I can see John going robbing a bank, and he goes home, and he puts on a tutu and puts on a nice... And what's that peril per, 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 that they do? Per, and he's doing like this when the police come in. They say, you're the bank robber. He says, I, I'm a... I'm a ballet dancer. <laughs> Does that make you a ballet dancer? No, you're a bank robber dressed up as a homosexual transvestite. <laughs> Get grief. <laughs> now we're going to see John in the tutu every time we look at him now, aren't we? You see that fluffy little... 
Okay, here it is. Huh? It's got to be pink, too. Got to be pink, yeah. Okay. Yeah, pink, a pink tutu, yeah. I wish I had time. I'm out of time. But I'm going to read some out of this. It's just unbelievable what's in here. What she knows about the history of witchcraft and of, of all these pagan holidays is amazing. This woman has studied her brains out in history because she matches what Mr. Stephen Missenbaum says about the battle for Christmas. He's a professor at the University of Massachusetts.